भगवत गीता चैप्टर सिक्स ध्यान योग द योग ऑफ मेडिटेशन चैंटिंग ऑफ श्लोका वन इज फॉलोड बाय ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाय स्वामी मुकुंदानंद श्री भगवान उच अनाश्रित कर्म फल कार्य कर्म कौति य सन्यासी चोगी चरग्न चाक्रिय द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सेट दोज हु परफॉर्म prescribed duties without desiring the results of their actions are actual sanyasis renunciates and yogis not those who have merely ceased performing sacrifices such as agnihotra yagya or abandoned bodily activities so the idea of sanyas is very alluring and shankaracharya was the one who glorified it presented it as an ideal for society he popularized the concept so he explained that a sanyasi should give up karma kand the ritualistic practices of the vedas to the extent that a sanyasi even gives up the sacred thread that is a part of the sanyas ceremony that initially you get the sacred thread but when you re- take the ashram of renunciation you renounce that and you renounce the sacrificial fire as well which means no more homas yagyas etc so that is the concept of sanyas where one has renounced but shri krishna is saying that renunciation should not merely be external external renunciation we see so much of it if you go to india you find babas and sadhus by the thousands nari mui गृह संपत्ति नासी मूड़ मुड़ाई भय सन्यासी पीपल थिंक ओ माय गॉड इट्स सो डिफिकल्ट इन द वर्ल्ड आई विल हैव टू मेक टू रोटीज व्हाई नॉट टेक सन्यास द गृहस्थीज विल स्टार्ट टेकिंग केयर ऑफ मी व्हाट इज द प्रॉब्लम सो नाउ यू कैन से दिस पर्सन इज अ सन्यासी बट श्री कृष्ण सेज दैट इज नॉट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सन्यास it's not an external thing holiness has got nothing to do with externals it has got nothing to do with the way we look whether we have got long hair or short hair or no hair whether we are tall or thin etc this is not holiness in itself there has been a saint called ashtavakra whose body was crooked in eight places he was the guru of king janak so when janak declared he challenged that i want knowledge who will come and enlighten me so he offered various rewards great scholars were enticed but none of them succeeded until finally ashtavakra came so ashtavakra was such a saint when he was in his mother's womb and his father would recite a ved mantra ashtavakra would make a correction father you made a mistake in that enunciation so his father became so annoyed you're not even born and you are still doing fault finding in my mantras he said go and become crooked in eight places the poor ashtavakra now imagine if he's got a 6 foot frame which is crooked in eight places means after every 9 inches there's crookedness 
so that ashtravakra arrived in the assembly of king janak now there were big scholars out there and they looked at ashtavakra they all started laughing they were just laughing at his body but ashtavakra smiled he said janak i had heard that the biggest scholars of bharatvarsh they sit in your assembly and here i find a bunch of cobblers is sitting the cobblers who deal with leather a bunch of cobblers is sitting now those big scholars were called cobblers they all got silenced but king janak understood he said oh sage you have called these big erudite learned pandits as scholars as uh, cobblers they wish to know why he said the reason is simple they are looking at my body and laughing they don't even know mahatma means mahan atma not mahan sharir but we people in the world due to lack of understanding we create external definitions of saintliness this baba is phalahari baba he eats only fruit really then he must be quite elevated and this baba is dudahari baba he doesn't even eat fruit he is only taking milk so he must be more severe than phalahari and that baba is pavanahari baba he doesn't even take milk he only does pranayam so then he's got a certificate of god realization but our scriptures say look if mere external renunciation was a criteria then the animals are more renounced than us meena snana para phani pavana bhog meshas cha parna shano nirash khalu chatako hi nitaram shete bile mushakah bhasmo dhulana tat paraschi hi karo dhyana nusakto bakaste nahi sarve yanti moksha padvim bhaktim bina shri hare the sukti sudhakar says that if mere ganga snan could result in purification the fish resides in the ganga if you are talking about being a digambar baba not wearing clothes the monkeys on the trees are also not wearing clothes if it comes to being phala phala hari well the goats they only eat eat the leaves and the snake funny pavana bhung it goes for long durations without eating anything merely subsisting on the air but such things are not sufficient in themselves so shri krishna says by mere such external renunciation you don't become a sanyasi then anashrita karma phalam karyam karma karoti ya those who are able to detach themselves from the fruits of their actions are the true sanyasis and true yogis those who are detached from insight they may be residing in the household the gopis that we are talking about these gopis who were praised by brahma and they were praised by uddhav these gopis were in household life they were karma yogis karma yoginis and yet even though they were doing their worldly duties their mind was completely in shri krishna detached from the world so <laughs> so many karma yogis have been there in our indian history dhruv was a king prahlad was a king and shankaracharya's guru does anybody know govinda acharya and his guru gaudapada acharya and his guru 
Shukadev Paramahans. And Shukadev Paramahansa's Guru Ved Vyas was a Grihasti in household life. And Ved Vyasa's Guru was Parashar. He was in a Grihasti. And his Guru Shakti was a Grihasti. And his Guru Vasisht was a Grihasti. So there's nothing about being a householder that disqualifies you from spirituality. The most important thing is to learn to practice detachment from insight. Anashrita karma phalam. That is why in the Bhagavatams, Griheshva vasthito rajan kriya kurvan griho chita vasudevar panam sakshat upasita maha munim. In household life, you do all your worldly duties. But do them as an offering to the Lord, which means the fruit is not for me, it is for Him. So engage in this kind of karma yoga. 